I figured some more classic good times were in order, but what was going to bring us said good times was left up to a vote on Patreon. And it seems that no one can get enough of that old woody boy Pinocchio. So let's dive into Pinocchio, the version children love. All for me and all for free, they never live in harmony. Like me, the boy that's made out of wood. Pinocchio is a soulless monster with no conscience, so he needs a cricket around to tell him not to destroy all before him. That's really not even much of an exaggeration, especially in the original tale, which was first released in chapter form via a weekly magazine starring in 1881 and was actually cancelled after chapter 15. But after what I guess would be one of the earliest fan protests, it was brought back and then later released as its own book in 1883. Disney, of course, made the story even more popular in 1940 with their adaptation, which lightened up quite a few aspects of it, but still, 1940 Disney goes harder than 2022 Disney. Originally, Pinocchio was smoking it up and they were drinking beer, which was depicted as not being so great as it turned them into jackasses. What's he think I look like? A jackass? But in the weenie 2022 version, they had to make it root beer. Even though that's clearly still regular beer in those mugs. What the cuss? But hey, at least the 2022 version had Pinocchio stop and smell the horse shit. Now, whenever you go back to the original Disney cartoon, you'll be wondering where's the classic scene of Pinocchio sticking his face in poop? Why, he is a natural born influencer! Obviously, the most important moment in Pinocchio history came in 1992, though, when American Film Investment Corporation, later renamed Golden Films, released their version of the story. With the Good Times Entertainment seal of quality. As this is Golden Films, we don't have proper voice cast credits, though IMDb has some of them listed. However, Cam Clark's credit should just be for half of the voices in this thing to be more accurate. Because, my little wooden pal, I say, I've got a Tremendoropolis idea. You run away just as fast as you can. Have you considered maybe they just wanted to take your gold coins? Oh, what's the matter, Pinocchio? We've also got Jim Cummings as Geppetto, and a lot of the voices in this that aren't Cam Clark. Jeannie Elias also has a lot of voice work to her name, but the most notable one to me is that she was Princess Toadstool in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Now, the Frank Welker credit, I'm not too sure about. It is very Frank Welker to be making animal noises, of course, but they also list him as the Ringmaster, when that is definitely Jim Cummings. Ah, my little four-footed wonder, I'm going to make a veritable ton of money off of you. So, I don't think Frank Welker is actually in this one. If Frank Welker was actually in this, they probably would have got him to do a few more voices than just cat noises. Come back here, you little scout. You're going to get in trouble out there. Why do you have to be so difficult? In most adaptations, Pinocchio doesn't seem to come to life until after he's built, but here we get to see the bodiless soul of Pinocchio flying around. Which is weird because I thought he didn't have a soul. The blue fairy tries to get the soul to stop being bad and come back to her soul dungeon, but it flies off and I guess gets trapped inside Geppetto's firewood. I think maybe you don't want to go into the fire just yet, eh? Apparently a log falling out of his fireplace is all it takes for Geppetto to completely change his mind on what to do with it. Which I guess is pretty damn lucky for Solnokyo because if Geppetto just tossed that log back in the fire, that would have been a pretty quick end for him. You are going to be a little boy, my little boy. I'd say Geppetto really needs a pet or something, but he's already got a cat. Are you going to be a good little boy, huh? Ah, Pinocchio's first act upon living is to lie. He's already become a real boy. In the original tale, though, Pinocchio's first act was to kick Geppetto before he's even finished making him. Which really sets the tone for what a demon child the little wood boy's about to be. 
Pinocchio's first use of his feet in this cartoon are to head right to the market and attempt to steal, which I guess delights the shopkeeper until he's suddenly upset about it. Oh no you don't! Now that you've proven yourself untrustworthy, I'll leave you alone with my apples! I trust you'll not steal- oh damn I'm dumb. Did I get high on wood shavings again last night? I haven't given him a name. How can I call to him when it doesn't even have a name? Geppetto was apparently expecting his puppet to come to life. You know, that happens all the time. Originally, when Pinocchio first starts being a little jerk around town, he's caught by a carabinieri, which was an Italian law official who thinks Pinocchio is being mistreated at home, so Geppetto gets sent to jail. Pinocchio immediately kicking his father and then getting him sent to jail kind of makes their dynamic a little less heartwarming, doesn't it? This apparently delayed reaction water starts drowning the little pine boy. We need a simple, strong stage name. Chris Pine! <laughs> Chris Pine, timeless. Pinocchio getting water thrown on him by a neighbor and then going to dry himself off by the fire is a bit right from the book. However, during this, Pinocchio accidentally burns his feet off. So Pinocchio has to wait for Geppetto to get released from jail to make him new feet. I lost my feet! Oh, don't worry about that. I can make new feet for you. So I'm glad good times kept that. At least sort of. Well, have you learned your lesson, little puppet? Who's talking to me? Well, it's me, the cricket of the house. Pinocchio throwing a hammer and immediately killing the cricket is exactly what happened in the book, by the way. Imagine if Pinocchio had done that to Jiminy Cricket in the Disney version. I certainly wish he had done that in their live action one. Ugh, useless ass cricket. What the cuss? So yeah, Pinocchio and the cricket weren't quite as close in the original version, you know, due to the murder. The cricket does show up after this a few times, though, as a ghost to haunt the evil little wood boy. Well, if it isn't the ghost of Christmas ass. I keep things in order for your father, Geppetto. Well, I guess this is actually one of the better depictions of the cricket since he's not a home invader like in most adaptations. I mean, since the animals that can talk in Pinocchio are basically treated like people, Cricket Hole really is just being a hider in the house frogger. Yo, 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 yo. Even a little dummy like you needs to know how to care for people. No wonder Pinocchio immediately killed this guy. What should I call? you? Mega duck. I like that. I'm not a real boy, am I? No. You're dead, Pinocchio. But someday maybe you will be. Someday I'm gonna be a real boy! Yes, it seems highly unlikely that would randomly happen, but get your hopes way up! Geppetto then sends Pinocchio off to school, which is always a bit I kinda wonder about. Like, is Pinocchio just joining class in the middle of the school year, and shouldn't Geppetto let the teachers know that he wants to enroll him? Especially where he's a little wooden abomination? Though I guess Pinocchio really isn't all that special in this world, considering there are things like fox and cat people. And it's always kind of weird when a world has both regular animals and anthropomorphic animals. So, like usual, Pinocchio gets sidetracked before making it to school by a marionette show to learn the ways of his people. Take a seat, shorty! <laughs> 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 a random boy falling? This is the best show ever! Little wooden boy, let go of my puppets! Father, did you grow a beard really quick? Please let go of my puppets! We thought you were great when you were falling, but suddenly a puppet with no strings is super boring and we hate it! Tell me again why you ruined my show! Manjafuko's other puppets were apparently alive as well in the book, and Pinocchio distracted them, which ruined the show. Which I guess really makes Pinocchio not very special. And speaking of a school, how come you no go today? I didn't go to school. You skip school? How come you didn't go to school? Because I didn't go to school. Fair enough. 
Manjifuko was originally going to use Pinocchio as firewood to cook his dinner. But in a massive turnaround, after hearing Pinocchio out, instead of burning him alive, he gives him five gold pieces and sends him on his way. And for a completely useless change, Good Times for some reason has switched out the fox for a wolf. Whistling in the dark, Pinocchio, old chap. How'd you know my name? We heard your father calling for you. P -p -p Pinocchio. If there's one thing Geppetto loves doing in any adaptation, it's wandering around calling out to someone. Pinocchio! 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 Times is actually subtly hinting at the original grift the fox and the cat were playing in the book by the cat having sunglasses and the wolf having a cane, as the cat was pretending to be blind and the fox was pretending to be lame. By the end of the story, they actually end up blind and lame, to which Pinocchio says, that's what you get. My papa sold his coat to buy me a spelling book. But then I traded it to book. see this yeah, puppet show man gave me these five coins to buy <laughs> Utterly fascinating story, I'm sure. Thank you for that. A white blackbird tries to warn Pinocchio not to trust the fox and the cat, but the cat eats the bird, and I guess that proved to Pinocchio that they're on the level. I've got a Tremendoropolis idea. We're going to take you to the Field of Wishes. Taking Pinocchio to the Field of Wishes or Miracles and telling him he could grow a money tree with his cash was the original grift on the Wood Boy, where, of course, the Disney one changed it to them selling Pinocchio to Manja Fuko, who was renamed Stromboli. You never should have listened to those two. They only want your gold coins. Run away fast as you can! Man, do I hate Golden Films' slapdash scoring when they just toss classical music in there that doesn't fit the tone. Do 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 do. The fox and the cat separate from Pinocchio after they leave him a message saying that one of the cat's kittens has fallen ill and they'll meet up with him at the magic field later. But they then dress up as bandits and attempt to rob Pinocchio, and during the struggle, Pinocchio bites one of the cat's paws off. Truly a timeless tale. The Good Times version naturally skips the pawful robbery. But it has the cat and the wolf chasing Pinocchio dressed as trees, which is another subtle book reference to a really dark part. Because after Pinocchio's paw lust, the fox and the cat attempt to murder Pinocchio by hanging him in a tree. So, it's real cute that Good Times reference that. Please let me in! They're after me, please! Why did I do that? Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Whoa! Blue Fairy! Fairy! The Blue Fairy was originally called the Fairy with Turquoise Hair, and this was a really weird point of the story because in the book she tells Pinocchio she is dead, as are all that are inside her house. And, you know, she's just waiting for her coffin so he can't come in, which is what leads to Pinocchio's hanging. It's not until the next chapter that's actually revealed she's a fairy, so with the original serialized nature of how the story was first released, I wonder if that wasn't originally the plan for her. The fairy with turquoise hair, by the way, wasn't responsible for bringing the evil wood boy to life, even though most adaptations pin it on her. How many gold coins did you say you had? Oh, a hundred. <coughs> Why, Poop Nokia, what a big nose you have. All the better to smell shit with, my dear. You were lying, Pinocchio. This messed up bit with woodpeckers chopping his nose back down to size is straight from the book, which is why it's so weird. Pinocchio is a little messed up from the hanging in the book at this point, but won't take his medicine, so the turquoise fairy summons some Undertaker rabbits, who obviously work for the... Just rest now, Pinocchio. Up! I have to tell him where I am! A messenger has already gone to tell your papa where you are. Well, that seems highly unlikely, but okay. 
And like usual, Geppetto is an idiot and decides to look for Pinocchio at sea for reasons only known to him. Pinocchio then does meet up with the fox and cat again and notices the cat's missing a paw, which they cover for by saying they had to give the paw to a hungry wolf. And I think the cat in this cartoon having a sweater that covers its paws might be another weird slight reference to this. And then she told me that my papa was but coming then, to get me out of the house, you know? So bad, then, bad when I woke up... <laughs> Yet another fascinating story. I'm really on the fox's side here. I mean, wolf, whatever. So, how does the cat do a toothy smile here when it seems like he's only got one tooth left in his mouth when it's shown almost every other time? But I'm glad useless Crickinardo just sleeps while Pinocchio gets tricked for the millionth time. Really, the cricket tends to be pretty useless most of the time. Hell, even Jiminy Cricket gets ready to abandon Pinocchio a few times in the Disney one. I am through! But Jiminy! Guess he won't need me anymore. I'm your conscience, Pinocchio! Oh, you're being bad? I give up. This is the town of Catch Fools, which is apparently just filled with anthropomorphic animals. It's by this animal town where Pinocchio buries his coins in the supposedly magic field, and the fox and cat swiftly steal them. After noticing this, Pinocchio goes back to town and reports the theft to a gorilla judge, who sentences Pinocchio to four months in prison for the crime of foolishness. No justice in Catch Fools, I guess. Pinocchio ends up getting released after the Emperor of Catch Fools wins some battle and in celebration wants more criminals on the streets, I guess. Blue Fairy! Hey! Blue Fairy! You Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Blue Fairy! Fairy. Whoa, blue fairy. Fairy. Drew Carey! Drew Carey! The fairy plays a hilarious prank on Pinocchio at this point in the book as he finds a tombstone that reads, The fairy died believing that Pinocchio had abandoned her. That fairy has a real morbid sense of humor. So, just like in the book, the Good Times one has a random giant bird just happen to show up and tell Pinocchio that the fairy and his father are off searching for him and gives him a ride. Great music choice. Pinocchio is a real Valkyrie. There he is! Good thing the ocean is such a small place, so they found him immediately. Of course, Geppetto in his series of dumb events gets swallowed by a whale before Pinocchio can get to him. Wait, Pinocchio. Yikes! That seems highly inappropriate. Should I be censoring this? By the way, the hungry, hungry sea creature was originally the terrible dogfish and not a whale. So Good Times was just copying Disney by having it be a whale. Which, you know, is something they would normally never do. Um, ma'am, I'm so hot. Will you help me carry these buckets to my home? This house looks just like the Blue Fairy's house. Ta-da! Why did I do that? The Blue Fairy is gone! Where? She's gone to look for you! Disguising yourself as an old woman moving buckets around sure is an odd way to conduct a search. Nothing but bad things are always happening to me! Happening to you or happening because of you? Oh yes, Waltz of the Flowers from the Nutcracker Suite is the perfect scoring choice here, you hacks! So, things get weird again. Although finding parts that aren't weird in Pinocchio would be the real miracle. The fairy adopts Pinocchio and tells him he can become a real boy if he's good and goes to school for a year. Guess that whole Geppetto swallowed by a sea creature situation isn't a priority. What's the matter, Pinocchio? You're gonna miss a little school and have the goody-goody fairy get mad at you? You'd better watch it, Cam Clark. You don't want to get Cam Clark mad at you. Today's the day I become a real man. But how? I'm going to Dunsland. Dunceland. Subtle. This is usually called like Toyland or Pleasure Island to try and hide the nefarious intent, but I guess if you willingly go to Dunceland, you belong there. Everyone knows school's for fools. What do you think I look like? A jackass? Neatness doesn't count in Dunceland. Wait for me! I hear Dunceland has such smells to offer me. Don't do it, Pinocchio! Does that donkey know him? Hurry, Pinocchio! Don't do it! 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 Don't do
If you can't trust a crowd of canned clerks, who can you trust? I hope you like the drama of Will Pinocchio Get to Dunceland because they really dragged this part out for some reason. Now, in the book, the carriage was completely filled up, so Pinocchio had to ride on one of the donkeys directly, but it keeps bucking him off, so the coachman comes out and bites half of its ears off, causing it to weep. You know, just in case you didn't think the whole child donkey thing in Pinocchio wasn't messed up enough as it was in most adaptations. I always kind of wonder about this whole donkey scheme, though. Like, the coachman and friends can't be making enough money just selling donkeys to justify the giant Disneyland-esque fair they have to run for free to lure children in and turn them into donkeys. These donkeys really must be worth their weight in gold or something. Glad the giant bird and liquid cricket are also enjoying Dunceland. They don't get turned into donkeys, though. What's it say, Pinocchio? It says, Mirror, mirror, where boys become men. Candlewick, can't you read? Don't think you can read either, Pinocchio, considering it clearly just says, House of Mirrors. Underneath those words it says, Enter at your own risk. If only they could have been bothered to actually put that on the sign so Pinocchio doesn't just look like an idiot. Then again, I don't know how you can not look like an idiot at Dunceland. So, unsurprisingly, the Good Times take on the whole donkey transformation is much lighter than Disney in the 40s. Hell, they weren't even allowed to be drinking root beer. <laughs> no! Candle! <laughs> Well, if it isn't the ghost of Christmas ass. And that's the end of Candlewick. This is always a bit messed up how Pinocchio never seems to care about his buddy after the donkey transformation. Though later in the book, Pinocchio does find Candlewick being overworked on a farm. He tries to help out his donkey pal, but Candlewick dies of exhaustion shortly after. So that's probably why a lot of adaptations don't bother following up on the whole Candlewick story. Doc Okio gets sold to a circus where we get a rather interesting Jim Cummings voice for the ringmaster. You will now witness the most difficult feat of animal daring under the big top. That little donkey will jump into this tiny pool of water. And that's when the fairy says she's fulfilled her promise of turning Pinocchio into a real boy. Because, hey, she never specified that it'd be a human boy. You and my show, you worthless little amateur. Your skin is the only thing of value to me now. Goodbye. There's gotta be easier ways to skin your donkey, dude. What? Why, I've been hoodwinked. That's impossible. Nah, that seemed more likely than the stupid donkey drowning scheme working for ya. Pinocchio is apparently turned back into a puppet by the blue fairy in the Good Times one, but in the original story, Pinocchio explains that all the fish ate off his donkey skin. I can't believe I've been hooked by this little four-footed weasel! Blue fairy! Blue fairy! Blue fairy! Pinocchio then gets swallowed and accidentally finds his father, so he's not quite as heroic as the Disney one made him. I'm sorry I ran away and made you worry about me. Oh, that is so sweet. The next time he opens up, we'll both just swim out. Bye! We're just gonna stay in here and be digested. Why were we alive? Now if we can just get to the shore, we made it. Papa? Papa! Pinocchio apparently has super strength as he carries Geppetto all the way home. Which is still less stupid than the Pikachu's Tears revival of Geppetto from the live-action Disney one. The blue fairy is very sick. I'm afraid that she's dying. Well, I guess that's what she gets. This, of course, was a test to see if Pinocchio would pay up and make it worth the blue fairy's while to make him into a real boy. Papa! Thank you, Blue Fairy. When you wish 
upon a star, the star will come down and kill you. That's the version of the song I used to sing as a kid. Lovely, I know.